Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Anna, I'm a clinical psychology doctorate student and I make videos about real life applications to psychology. So if that's your type of thing, hit like, subscribe, hit the bell notification button. Today's video is directed at anyone that's considering breaking up with their partner, anyone who's considering reassessing their relationship. So as a therapist, I listen to clients talking about their relationships all the time. And sometimes I, as a person, feel like just shaking them and telling them my objective viewpoint of the relationship. But of course, that would be unethical because people have agency and a therapist cannot tell them what to do. But this kind of gave me a bit of an epiphany in that I was wondering if we were all to look at our own relationships from a bird's eye view, completely cold, putting aside all emotion, objectively describing our relationships, the facts of our relationship. What would that story look like? If it were a movie, would it have a happy ending? If this was one of your friend's stories, would you beg them to leave this person? Would it be clear as day to you that this relationship is not going to last? If I had done this with my own previous toxic relationships, it would have saved me so much time that I wasted, so much time that I tried to rationalize certain facts or tried to view it from a more emotion-driven place. And while I think emotion definitely plays an important role in relationships and how we assess those relationships, I think that for people who are considering leaving their partner, people who kind of feel deep down like this is not going to work out, it can be really beneficial to look at it just factually, using just what happened, when did it happen, what was the resolution, and does this sound like a story that has a happy ending? But I don't remember ever having that moment of clarity because obviously this is incredibly hard to do when it is about your own relationship, something that you're so invested in and partners are someone who broke a lot of emotion in us. So it's only normal that those emotions would get in the way of us seeing a very clear picture of the relationship. So I'm gonna give you some questions to help you guide how do you assess your relationship from a bird's eye view. And then I'm gonna give you two scenarios. One example is going to be something that obviously does not have a happy ending. And one can be something that could have a happy ending, something that could be a relationship that ends well. Because we need to get in the habit of practicing this so that once we apply it to ourselves, we're already very good at describing the relationship very fact-based. So the first thing that I want to drive home, stick to the facts and only the facts. How your partner makes you feel in the relationship is obviously very important but here it could get in the way of looking at the facts objectively. So this is not the place to include it. That is its own separate thing, and you have to decide for yourself if those emotions trump the facts. So things like, he makes me feel special, or I feel like I can be myself around her, do not belong here. This is not the place to include them. So the first question that I have is, how did the relationship start? So start with the beginning and be honest. Who was the initial pursuer and who was the initial distancer? For example, for my relationship in high school, I could have said, he asked me out, but in reality that was not very accurate because he asked me out because I was upset that he asked someone else to prom. So be brutally honest with yourself and don't sugarcoat the past so that it's easier for you to swallow. Honestly, be very blunt with yourself. My second question is, how long did the honeymoon phase last? And remember that the average honeymoon phase lasts about six months. So anything more than that is a green flag. Although I've certainly seen relationships where the honeymoon phase lasted more than a year and they still did not work out. And anything less than six months is kind of less than ideal. It's a little bit concerning. It's like, what's going on with this relationship that there are issues so early on? So if you're having major issues that you feel like you have to talk to your partner, talk to your friends, talk to your therapist about just a few weeks or a few months in, that's a red flag. The initial stages of a healthy romantic relationship do involve some level of idealization. My next question is, once the honeymoon phase ended, what were the main concerns or issues that came up for you? So there are a million examples that I could give here. Some concerns are bigger than others. Like for instance, they're too busy with work, they're not great at communicating their feelings, they have an annoying family, they have some habits that kind of annoy you, they don't know your love language, versus the more serious issues like you suspect emotional or physical cheating, they don't respect your boundaries, they speak to you disrespectfully, and so on. So after you've kind of exhausted what your concerns are for the relationship, maybe even what concerns they brought up, be honest 
what mistakes have you made in the relationship? And it's not only relevant how they wronged you, but also what type of person they turn you into. Did you cheat on them in retaliation because they betrayed you? Did you drop out of school because they were always procrastinating and that had a bad influence on you? Did you stop talking to your best friend because your partner was bad mouthing them so much that you lost respect for this friend? My next question is how do your arguments look? My partner and I, we never argue. We occasionally disagree on things very respectfully with a level tone and full of empathy. I don't consider that a fight. I know some people say all couples fight. I disagree. I have a very different view of fights based on my culture and my upbringing. And in my opinion, fights are unacceptable in the sense that screaming, insulting, slamming doors, storming out, getting up in your face, I don't think those things are ever okay. So in that sense, I don't think couples should ever fight in that way. I'm really curious, write down below what your definition of a fight is in a relationship because I honestly don't know what to think because I don't think any of these are acceptable. Some more moderate red flags about how your arguments might look is if your partner is stubborn, if they're not really listening to you, if they seem to be deflecting, if they talk down on you, if they can't apologize, if they're not open to discussing your issues and so on. The next question is, do your issues get resolved? Couples therapists say that couples will often have the same fight over and over again because the issue never really gets fully resolved. But I think that's also because most couples are extremely dysfunctional. I mean, since 50% of marriages end in divorce, I don't think that's really something that we should accept in relationships. And I don't think that it's unreasonable to expect whatever issues you or your partner bring up to at least partially resolve. Maybe only partially, maybe a little bit at a time, maybe slower than you would like, but they should not stay stable. They should not stay static. Your issues should be chipping away at least slowly, if not enthusiastically and completely. So for example, if your partner cheated on you in a one-time mistake, they apologized, they took responsibility, they changed their ways, they have a plan for how it's never gonna happen again. That's different from someone who cheated on you once, twice, three times, and there's no sense of, is this ever going to stop? The second to last question that I have is have you ever reached the level of a deal breaker? What was the lowest point in your relationship or the lowest points? Is the lowest point in your relationship that one week when you just didn't have a lot of time to talk to you? Or was it when you went on a break or broke up or were off and on multiple times? Because I hate to tell you this, but couples that need to take breaks or have broken up multiple times are rarely ever couples that make it in the long run. Rarely do we ever hear of happy endings where the partners were so unsure of themselves that they constantly broke up and got back together. And my last question is, deep down, do you think you are settling? If this were your friend in this relationship, would you feel like they're kind of settling? Would you kind of know that yeah, they're not really that into their partner. Be honest with yourself. Is your fear of being alone playing a role in your staying in this relationship? And this requires really chipping away at those defense mechanisms and really being very honest with yourself. So let's put this into practice. Like I said, I'll give two hypothetical examples. One that you'll see sounds like a story that doesn't have a very happy ending and one that sounds like it could have a happy ending. So story one, and this is from the perspective of Juanita. Juanita and Tom met through a dating app. They were seeing each other casually until about three months in when Juanita noticed that Tom was still active on the dating app. She asked him whether this was because he doesn't want to be with her and he reluctantly agreed to delete the app. From then on, they agreed to be in a relationship. About a month after that, Juanita began to notice that Tom was still getting texts from a different woman he had been talking to on dating apps before they were exclusive. She did not feel like she had the right to ask him about it, but she became more distressful when he went to parties and events without her, and whenever she would try to bring it up, Tom would deflect and ask not to talk about it because he was going through a lot right now. Juanita often talked to her friends about feeling uneasy and not knowing whether she could trust Tom because he would not talk openly about their issues. About a year into their relationship, Juanita heard from a friend that Tom was at a bar looking very flirtatious with another woman. Juanita confronted him and Tom drunkenly admitted that he had been dating someone for a few weeks 
but that they never did anything physical. Now here, let's break this down. Their relationship basically began with Tom not wanting to commit. The honeymoon phase lasted less than six months. The issue of trust is a pretty huge one. Juanita knew deep down that she couldn't trust Tom, and Tom ended up cheating, if not physically, at the very least emotionally. But he probably wanted to do physically cheating as well. If you were in Juanita's shoes, you would probably be thinking, well, he didn't sleep with this other woman because he actually cares about me, and he fessed up and apologized, and he's begging for a second chance, and things are kind of good between us. And, you know, you as a third person spectator right now might be thinking, no, I would never think that. But let's be honest, people in relationships, they do tend to rationalize. But how do you feel about the situation when you do look at it from a bird's eye view, the way that I just described it to you? Doesn't it sound like it's inevitable that Tom will cheat again? Doesn't it sound fairly obvious that he never wanted a relationship in the first place? Isn't it clear to you that Tom will probably not change his ways? Yes, and that is the type of objectivity that we have to practice in our own relationships as well, at least every now and then when we're trying to reassess, is this really what I want? And now scenario two, this one is from the perspective of Nick. Nick met Molly through mutual friends and they were instantly attracted to each other. He asked her out that week and then they started seeing each other more and more over the course of the next few weeks. They were sitting in bed eating takeout one night when Nick told Molly, I want you to be my girlfriend. She enthusiastically agreed, and they were in a honeymoon phase for almost a year. When issues did emerge, they weren't issues that they couldn't work around, like Molly not having time to see him because of her fast-paced job, or them having slightly different levels of comfort with PDA. Nick expressed his dissatisfactions with her one day, and Molly promised to start being more affectionate. She let him know that her job was important to her, but that she was open to looking for a new job in a year when her contract expired. So why this is a relationship that I think could last is they have a strong foundation, their issues are not deal breakers, they're able to communicate openly and respectfully, they're able to compromise, and they clearly care about each other. So if Nick were your friend, you probably wouldn't advise him to leave Molly, right? If this were a love story, you would probably be rooting for them. So now, after you've seen these two scenarios, you know, practice thinking about them along with me, I would love if you could do that with your own relationship. Maybe, you know, just writing a paragraph privately, maybe even posting it down below if you are open to that, but really share your narrative at least with yourself, be blunt with yourself, and allow yourself to examine this factually because if you are on the fence about whether or not this is the relationship for you, this could be something that helps you in making that decision. I hope that you reach the decision that is most fulfilling to you and just know that I have every faith that you will make the right choice for yourself. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe and I hope I'll see you soon.